Hello, Cornerstone family. Thank you so much for joining us online and worshiping with us. Today, we're going to be studying the Word of God and talking about how to avoid future mistakes. You're going to really enjoy what James has to say. Let's now worship with Pastor Joy and Kim. Welcome to church family. Sing today of his love, his grace. Come on, sing it. Here we go. This is amazing grace. This is a failing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. That I would be set free. Whoa, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Come on, rest in this love. Sing out worthy. Here we go. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Yes, worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is a fair love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. Oh, you lay down your life that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Our God, our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Yes, every knee will bow before Him. Oh, oh, oh. He's our God. Oh, oh, oh. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? He is with us. He is for us. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Yes, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? He is with us. Yes, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? He's fighting for us. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Come on, sing it. Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sin of the world, his blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Yes, every knee will bow before him. Come on, 
lay your burdens down. We sing it. Our God is fighting for us. He's with us. Come on. Our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the lamb, the lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Yes, every knee will bow before him. Come on, you believe in his love and his power? He's our Savior. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light, shine your light, and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Come on, you believe it? Savior. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light, shine your light, and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light, and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Come on, give him a shout of praise from your heart. We believe he's our Savior. Lift it up, family. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Because our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you were higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, our God. Yes, our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you were higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Yes, God, we believe in you, that you are greater, you are stronger than our circumstance. No matter what we are going through, we trust in you, we trust in you. And we rest in your love. Pray you be with us right now. Be with our Cornerstone family. Renew our minds. Renew our hearts, God.
Thank you for fighting for us, for loving us, for knowing us. Prepare our hearts right now for your message. Bless our pastor as he speaks, God. Father, we love you. We give you all the glory, all the honor and praise. All the church family say, amen. Hello, Corso family. Thank you for joining us online, and uh, thank you everyone for coming and worshiping here on campus. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about uh, making future decisions and everything, and how many would like to avoid future mistakes? Anybody? Okay, we'd all like to avoid future mistakes, right? Um, I, I know when we plan things out, and especially if you're doing things you've never done before, um, there's a learning curve, isn't there? There's this learning curve. I remember when we uh, got married and, and made our plans to get married, you know, get a job, career, and have kids and everything. Nothing went according to plan. You know, it just was like, anybody relate? Can relate to that, right? And it's like, wow, it's, it's, this is a big learning curve. Uh, I'm just curious if the older us now could go back 20 years in time, what would you tell your younger self? What would you tell your younger self to avoid, you know, mistakes? You know, and, and I, I know for us, um, life did not go as planned. Um, life was difficult. Our careers were difficult. But we had God at the center of our relationship. And that sustained us through very difficult times. And so we're going to talk about this morning. See, I, I believe we need a revival in America, and that revival has got to begin with us, then in our homes, and then hopefully throughout our communities and across America. We need a revival. And, and so this memory verse that we've been thinking of and praying about and, and uh, repeating each week, James chapter 4, verse 8, it says, come close to God, and God will come close to you. And there's a confidence that if you know that you're seeking God's will and, and you're not adding God in after you've made your plans, okay, we've all done that, right? But you're actually seeking God and trusting, putting your trust on him, that there's a confidence that God's going to make things work out. It may be difficult, but God's going to make things work out. So today, I want to talk about three uh, mistakes that we can avoid in our future planning. See, James has some great practical wisdom for us today. Uh, so when we're facing the future, we need to, one, avoid the mistake of planning without God. Avoid the mistake of planning without God. And I think all of us have done this, right? We've made our plans, and then it's like we pray about it. <laughs> it's like, no, I've already made up my mind. What am I praying about? I just want God to bless what I've made up my mind about. And, and that's, that's not what we need to be doing. We need to avoid the mistake of planning without God. So here's James chapter 4, starting in verse 13. He says, now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow, we'll go to this uh, or that city. You know, spend a year there. Carry on some business and make money. Sounds good. Got a good, solid business plan. Here we go, right? Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Woo. We're going to get into that in a little bit, right? Um, instead, instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, if it is the Lord's will, we'll live and do this or that. As it is, you boast and brag, and all such boasting is evil. So what happens is when we start making our plans and then we want to add God in at the end, that, that doesn't work. God can't be an afterthought. God can't be number two. He needs to be number one in your life. You need to depend on him, put him at the center of your life. And then, even when you go through tough times, because no one saw the coronavirus coming. And it's been a lot of left turns, right turns, stop, wait. You know, and, and, and the new normal is now not the new normal. There's another new normal. And, and, and life is just unhinged right now. 
And without having God at the center, we would all fall apart. And so James is reminding us when we make our plans, we need to make our plans with the Lord first in thought. This um, Proverbs 21, verse 5, I love that what it says here. Good planning and hard work lead to prosperity. Very true. But hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. So God's word is not against making plans. It's just that we need to make plans with God at the center of our plans, not adding them in as an afterthought. So Psalm uh, 37 this passage I read every year for our anniversary. I think about it. I pray about it. It's one of those passages that God has put on my heart, my wife's heart, to really own, you know. And, and so we pray about it. We pray through it. We read through it. Uh, Psalm 37, verse 3 says this, Trust in the Lord and do good. Uh, so first, trust God. And then what? Do what is good. Do what is right, right? Um, then you will live safely in the land and prosper. You want God's blessing, you want to prosper, then you need to first trust in God and then do what is right. And that's not a mystery. We all know what is right. And then he says, verse four, take delight in the Lord and he'll give you your heart's desires. So make God first. Be, be joyful about celebrating your relationship with your heavenly father. Take delight in him. Again, making him the center of our decision making. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. So as you start to make future plans, you want to avoid the mistake to not have God in it or to have him as an afterthought. Because if we do this, if we start to trust God, if we start to do what is right, we start to really make our relationship a center part of our decision making and we delight in the Lord we commit our ways to him in verse 6 it says he will make your innocence radiate like the dawn and the justice of your cause will shine like the new day sun God's got your back and there's this confidence that God will help you through your difficult difficult times you you don't know what the future holds none of us do I don't know I mean my wife and I when we when we got married, it, it was, you know, we made all these plans, but things turned around differently. Things didn't happen the way we thought, and the timing did not happen the way we thought. So start to pray and ask, invite God into your decision making. Verse 7 says, Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Trust that God's going to make things right. Trust that God's going to make things right. Be patient. Wait for him. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about the wicked schemes. You need to just trust in the Lord. And, and there's this thing, I was talking about this to my um, daughter-in-law this week. Um, as we trust and as we delight and as we cultivate faithfulness in the Lord, there's these seasons of time that we are planting seeds. And then you know what comes right after you plant seeds? The harvest. No, it doesn't. You know, it's like, I'm going to commit my way finally to the Lord right now, and I'm expecting the harvest tomorrow. That isn't the way it works. When you plant, then you water, and then you water some more. And, and there may be months, two months, three months, not just days, not just weeks, before the harvest comes. But that's trusting. That's waiting on God to bless us, waiting on God to bring us into where he wants us to be. And during this time, I'm praying that you're just trusting in the Lord and waiting on him to answer your prayers, making him the center of your decision-making. So first, first thing we need to do when facing the future, we need to avoid the mistake of planning without God. And the second thing we need to do is to avoid the mistake of taking tomorrow for granted. I know many of us right now, um, we think, Life, well, before the COVID-19, we thought life would happen kind of like regular thing. You know, this is what we can expect. <laughs> All that's off the map now. It's like you don't know what tomorrow holds. And right now, invest in time in your family. Um, every one of us um, has an expiration date. Not one of us will live forever on this planet. 
There'll be a day when we breathe our last here, and then we'll breathe our next breath in heaven. And will God welcome us with his arms? You know, and that's the question we need to answer. And so in James 4.14, 4, I'm going to read this verse again. He says, you know, you're making plans. And he goes, why? You don't even know what will happen tomorrow. You don't have a guarantee about tomorrow. He says, what is your life? You're a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. You know, you're just a blip on the screen. I don't know about you, but I'm going to get a little older this year. You know, I'm going to hit 59 in August, and it's, it's kind of one of those, huh, <laughs> it's older than I thought it was. You know, one of those things, you know. My wife and I, when we, our first 17 years of marriage, You know how many times we moved? Take a guess. Anybody? Three? Nope. Ten? Nope. First 17 years of our marriage, we moved 19 times. 19 times. Do you know how unsettling that is? And, and just so you know, 12 of those 19 times was in the city of Poway because of, you know, jobs, and uh, I, I've always had like a second job being a pastor here until recently I was able to just go down to one job. Um, <laughs> and it was it was discouraging. It, it just seemed like forever. It's like, wow, you know, I, I just want a place that we can call our home. Uh, there was a period of, of a couple of years that we were literally um, kind of like homeless in a way, um, all of our belongings was packed into the storage uh, over here on Poway Road, and we basically uh, would be in a house that people went on vacation. So we may stay at this house for two or three weeks, and and we had some friends that went on vacation for like a month and a half, and that was awesome. We got to stay a month and a half in one place, and and it was that way for almost a year. And I remember like this is forever. I remember renting. Uh, a bedroom that wasn't a bedroom. It was the living room of this one family, and, and that's all that we could afford at the time. Uh, difficult times. And I remember thinking, I remember thinking, wow, um, this is forever for one, and it's depressing. I'm failing my family. I'm failing my wife. I'm failing my kids. And if you ask my kids, they look back on those times as adventure. <laughs> they look at, back on those times as camping, you know, and they weren't disappointed in the lack of money or the lack of ability of a place to say, this is our home. They just liked being with us as a family. Uh, but I, I got to admit, if I could go back you know, 20 years and tell myself, my younger self at that time, hey, pay attention to your family. Because I didn't. I was working three jobs. I was trying to make things up. I was trying to, you know, make finances up. I was trying to make things work out. And, and, and it was driving me into the ground. And, and I know if, if I was one of the dwarfs, you know, I, I would have been grumpy, you know, because that's, I, I was just grumpy all the time because I wasn't getting rest. And, and right now I look at this COVID-19 period of time, and I, I think this can be a blessing. It can be, in this sense. We had the opportunity to spend more time as a family. Now, I said opportunity. It doesn't mean we are, but we have the opportunity. We have the opportunity to set a new schedule and say, Sunday night dinner. The kids aren't going to be at soccer practice. They're not going to be at basketball or baseball. We have that opportunity. Will we do that? You know, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that next week, but if we take advantage of making our families as a priority, taking today's as a, as a day of not, not letting it go by, don't take it for granted, but take advantage of this day and invest in your family, I, I think it could make a huge difference in our lives. James says our life is just like a mist. It, it goes in, in, in really fast and and you know, I'm almost 59, and I can look back, and I can remember when I was in junior high. That was a very long time ago. I can remember when I was in kindergarten. <laughs> that was a very long time ago. 
Your life goes by fast. Jesus wanted to illustrate this, this principle. And in Luke chapter 12, he gives this, this parable. So in verse 15, we're going to pick it up here. It says, he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And that's often how we measure our value, right? What I have, my bank account, my house, you know, whatever, we measure ourselves. But that's not how life is measured. He says, he tells this, this parable, the, gra- the ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. You know, every now and then there's a bumper crop. Now, my peach tree, the first year I planted, no peaches. Second year I planted, no peaches. Third year, wow, there's a lot of peaches. Well, now many years later, it's, it's a bounty most years. Not always, but a lot. So he has this bumper crop, right? It's a good crop. He thought to himself, what should I do? I have no place to store my crops. What a problem to have. So imagine all of his barns are filled. So what do you do with the excess? Give to maybe the needy? Look out and, and see other people that are in need. Uh, we have a family in our church right now, and I love um, their senior citizens. And what they're doing is they're ministering to their block. They're shopping for their block. They're, they're bringing over, you know, um, hamburger, I, fresh vegetables and, and fruit, and, I, and they're caring for their neighborhood. I love that. But this guy, what does he do? He thought to himself, what should I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I love the third person. <laughs> this is what I'll do. Self, self. I, t- I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store all my grain and goods. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. I finally can just enjoy life. What's the problem so far? He hasn't been enjoying life all the way long. Every day is a gift, but he keeps pressing for the future. So now he finally finished rebuilding his barns, and God said to him, you fool. Never good when God starts with you fool. This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? Hmm. This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich toward God. Your most important relationship is with your Heavenly Father. And God teaches us that we not only need to love Him, but we also need to love others. We need to be faithful. We need to devote ourselves to caring for our family and loving on each other as we love God. But if we do not have a relationship, and that's what he's getting at here, this is how it will be. If you store up for yourself things, but you're not rich towards God, none of us want to be in that position. But our life, as James said, is just a mist. It's a short time. So when facing the future, we need to avoid the mistake of planning without God. And when facing the future, we need to avoid the mistake of taking tomorrow for granted. Live in the now. Live in the here. Invest in your relationship with your Heavenly Father and invest in your relationship with your family and your friends. And the third thing we need to avoid is avoid the mistake of delaying doing good. Of delaying doing good. Look what James says here in verse 17. Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. Now wait a minute. I thought sin was only when I did something I knew that was terrible, right? No, James is bringing up the sin of omission. 
You see, there's, when we know what is, when it's something that we should do that is right, like I know that I should take out the garbage because that's my job. Trash comes on Thursday, so Wednesday night, if I don't take out the garbage, it's going to be a bad thing on Thursday. If I know it's right to do, I should do it. And if I don't do it, it's sin. I know it's right to love my wife. I know it's right to love my, my son, my daughter. I know it's right to love my parents. I know it's right to love my neighbor. I know it's right to be honorable towards people in my life, to love and respect. And when I don't do what is right, James says, it's sin. And, and so we, we often make this mistake of, of delaying doing good. I'll get to it later. I'll get to it later. You don't know about tomorrow. And if God has laid something on your heart to do, do it now. Don't wait for tomorrow. And James talked about this in James chapter 2, verse 14. He said, what good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Can that kind of faith change your life, your family's life? No. Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food and clothing, and you say, goodbye, have a good day, stay warm, and eat well. But then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? It doesn't do any good. So you see, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. It is dead and useless. I would never want someone to say that Ed Turley's faith is dead, that it's useless. You see, faith, real faith, real life-changing faith, as we've been praying for our faith to change our own hearts and our family and, and eventually our communities, real faith always has action behind it. Because we love God, we love others. Because we love God, we take care of people, our family, our friends, our community. We need to avoid the mistake of delaying doing good. I believe God has put things on our hearts. Maybe it's our neighbors. Maybe it's our family. Areas that we need to do good. Areas we need to show respect and honor. Maybe it's a phone call that we need to make and just talk to somebody and encourage them. If we know what is right to do and we don't do it, James says, that's sin. You're missing the point here. That your faith should cause you to love others and care about others. There's going to come a day when the Lord calls us home. We'll breathe our last breath on this earth. And when we get to heaven, will we have a relationship with him? A life-saving relationship. Do you know Jesus personally? Have you given him your life? Have you invited him into your heart to be your Lord and Savior? In our future plans, we need to avoid the mistake of planning without God. We need to avoid the mistake of taking tomorrow for granted. We need to avoid the mistake of delaying doing what is right, what is good. So how can I put God back into my future plans? I want to give you some next right steps. The first step is to pray and seek God's wisdom for future decisions. To avoid those mistakes, my wife and I, I love Psalm 137. It's a favorite passage for her as well. Uh, just start reading through this. For the next seven days, I want to encourage you to read these verses and pray through them. As you start to make plans for the future, as God reminds you to cultivate faithfulness, as God reminds you to do what is right, to put him at the center of your decision-making. The second challenge is to be present in your relationships. It's never been easier, but it doesn't mean we do it. It's easier because we're at home a lot right now. 
And a lot of the extra uh, activities have been, you know, stifled for a while. So now's the time. Make some new habits, like being present with your family, spending time with them. The third challenge is do something good for someone this week. If God is laying something on your heart, do something good. Care about somebody. Love on them. Maybe it's your neighbor and their yard needs to be raked up and cleaned up. We'll do that. Maybe God is putting on your heart to write somebody a letter. We'll do that. Maybe God's put on your heart to call somebody and just encourage them. We'll do that. Don't delay. And then if you have not invited Christ into your life to be your Lord and Savior, I'm going to encourage you to do that today. Don't put it off. Because we don't have a guarantee about tomorrow. Would you pray with me? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a righteous and holy God. And that you love us. Lord, all of us have experienced mistakes that have hurt us, that have hurt our family. And God, now as we start to plan for the future, I pray that we put you at the center of our decision making. That, God, we would not force things and try to add you later on. That does no no good, Lord. It doesn't even make sense. So, Lord, we ask you for forgiveness. and, And, Lord, help us now to really trust that you are good. Trust that you will sustain us during those difficult times, even in a pandemic. Because, God, you are good. You are faithful. You are loving. Lord, we pray for our families. As we want a revival, it's got to begin with us. So we got to be present in our families' lives. We got to be present with our spouse, with our kids, with our parents. We got to spend time and enjoy that time together. So, Lord, I pray that we'd make some new habits this week. And Lord, we ask that you would lay on our hearts something that we should do this week. Something that is good. Maybe it's for a family member. Maybe it's for a neighbor. But Lord, lay on our heart somewhere where we can bless someone else. And as we're praying right now, if you've not yet invited Christ into your life, I want to encourage you to do so. Don't wait till tomorrow. You don't know. You don't know you have tomorrow. None of us do. So would you pray with me? Just say along with me in your living room. You can say this prayer here at Cornerstone. You can say this prayer to say, Dear Jesus, thank you so much that you love me, that Jesus, that you took my sins, my shame, and my guilt, and that you went to the cross and you became my substitute that you died and you paid for my sins with your very life. And on the third day, you rose again. Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life to be my Lord, my God, and my Savior. Lord, I want you to be the center of my life, the center of my plans for my future. And help me to love others the way you have loved me. It's the powerful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. If you invited Christ into your life, um, please let me know. You can text the word BELIEVE to 858-682-2424. And if you'd like to connect with us, you can also type in the word CONNECT to 858-682-2424. Now we're going to do some worship again. And as we do, um, we're going to worship and encourage you to just sing your heart out to God. Let's do that now. creation of water, earth, and sky. 
The heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord of heaven and earth. Early in the morning, I will celebrate. Early in the morning, I will celebrate the light. Cause when I stumble in the darkness, I will call your name by night. I will call your name by night. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy. Holy, the universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord of heaven and earth, hallelujah, to the Lord of heaven and earth, hallelujah, to the Lord of heaven and earth. You are holy, holy, precious Lord, precious Lord. Reveal your heart to me, Father, hold me, hold me. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, you are holy, holy. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. You are holy, holy. Yes, you are holy, holy. Father, we love you. We praise you. Thank you for this amazing time we can spend together as a Cornerstone family. Continue to watch over, protect us, can keep us safe, and uh, just be with all of us as we trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Cornerstone family, thank you so much for joining us today online. We are so glad you're joining us. Uh, we care about your health and safety. If you feel comfortable to join us every Sunday, 9, 15, and 11, we are here live in person. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like and share our posts on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for joining us today. And part of our worship is giving, and we appreciate uh, just how God is using your funds to help more people find and follow Jesus. So you can uh, give online. You can do what my family do. We do a bank check, or you can write in a check, uh, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Thank you for your generosity. Until next week, God bless. God bless you. Bye.